Welcome to my preview of the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl featuring the Mountain West champions 10 and 3 Utah State versus 7 and 5 Oregon State. Both of these teams are exceeding expectations this season by a lot. Neither of these programs were predicted by myself or really anybody else to make it into a bowl game this season and yet Utah State winning the Mountain West, Oregon State exceeding expectations, a team that went 2 and 5 last season, 5 and 7 the year before that, getting to 7 and 5 and making it into a of bowl game here with a lot of surprising wins along the way and some very close losses as well for Oregon State. So Utah State, a team that for a while there was really struggling to get over Jordan Love, finally able to find a quarterback who could not necessarily replace him but rise to the level that needed to take this team to victory uh, here in Bonner. Able to find that quarterback this season in Logan Bonner and get them into the Mountain West Championship game and then upset a very good top 25 San Diego State team that had just got done beating my Boise State Broncos and Utah State's able to go in and get that win. So this has been an incredible season for both these programs. It'll be exciting to see how they finish it out the stretch. 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ABC, a chance for both these programs to play in a, a evening primetime slot here on a major network, a chance to kind of upend that East Coast bias, show those East Coast viewers what the West football, the Pac-12 Mountain West football is all about. It should be a very exciting time. Oregon State is favored in this one by seven points, given a 66.3% chance of winning. As far as series history goes between these two programs, Oregon State owns that. They have uh, won, it th won three games in the series, three to zero. The first game ever was in 1904. Uh, Utah State lost zero to 45 in that matchup. The last game, or most recent game, was in 1998. Close affair, 16-20, to but still lost by Utah State. So Utah State trying to get their first ever win in this series, even though neither of these teams have met in the modern era, the post-2000 era of college football. All right, so record preview, or, or sorry, record review overall here. So what was being predicted at the beginning of the season? Well, I was saying 5-7, and seven, which was more generous than most experts for Utah State. Uh, most analysts were saying 4-8, and eight, so I said 5-7, and seven, and Utah State ended up surprising both of us getting to a 10 and 3 overall record here or a 10 or a 9 and 3 prior to beating Santa State in the Mac, in the Mountain West Championship game. Oregon State on the other hand, I was saying 2 and 10 or Athlon Sports was saying 4 and 8 and Oregon State ending up getting to 7 and 5. So a really a big surprise turnaround a lot of that because of their running game. Really good running back we're going to talk about it in a second here. Uh, but it is they have had some very close losses. I mean they almost beat Oregon. I think the final score was was 32 to 29 or something like that. So I mean this close to upsetting the Ducks. So worst loss of the season, kind of how they got to this point. Worst loss season for Utah State was Wyoming, uh, forty-four to seventeen loss to a Wyoming team that's six and six and bowl eligible, uh, but still a loss late in the season that could have sunk their chance to the Mountain West game, a Mountain West Championship game. I mean, Utah State was motivated to get this win; they still lost. That could spell trouble in a matchup in that, in this case, well, the teams are completely different. Utah State has already shown the uh, ability to, or shown the propensity to stumble potentially down the stretch here. So we'll have to see how that ends up playing into this one. Oregon State, their best or, or worst loss of the season was a 37 to 34 overtime loss to Colorado, four and eight Colorado team by the way. Uh, so a bad loss there, but a loss that they almost got the win in, pulling out in overtime. Best win of the season, uh, well we just kind of referenced it for Utah State, 46 to 13 drubbing of number 19 San Diego State. It was 10 and 2. They also, however, have a win against a Pac-12 team already, a Washington State team that Oregon State lost to. So that's interesting. When you look, I mean, every game's a different circumstance. That there's a lot of things that play into why a team wins and sometimes and, and loses it in other cases. But uh, Washington State, a team that Utah State owns a win against, has a win against Oregon State. Oregon State, their best win, uh, however, was against a Utah team that it, after they'd made their switch over, after they switched quarterbacks and let Brewer go, uh, who ended up the season 10-3 and winning the Pac-12. So they team that they beat halfway through the season or at the first third uh, or you know after the first third of the season there very similar to the team that ended up winning the Pac-12 championship at the end and Oregon and uh, Oregon State was able to beat them 42 to 31. Top players in this one determiners for this game as you uh, as it were Logan Bonner for Utah State one of the top quarterbacks in the nation 3,560 yards passing that's good for 12th overall in passing yardage 36 touchdowns 11 interceptions that's been a big issue with him is those picks uh, but that, that passing yardage is a big big number uh, and he's been one of the best quarterbacks in the Mountain West. Oregon State, their strength is in their running game. 1,259 yards rushing, 13 touchdowns, uh, average of 6 yards per carry by B.J. Baylor, their main running back here. So 
Keys to the game here. What needs to happen to win this game? Well, for for Utah State, it's force Oregon State to go to the air. Uh, when they're forced into the air, they end up making some mistakes. They end up losing. Their main quarterback here, Nolan, nine interceptions this season, uh, and that is not their strong point. Their strong point is their running game. Their passing game is is average to below average. If Utah State can take away the running game, which they have been able to do at times, they limited it against San Diego State. It's been a very dangerous running game, limited them to under 150 yards rushing. If they can limit them in the running game, they're going to have success. Oregon State has averaged this season uh, 219 yards rushing per game. So only 213 yards passing per game but they've averaged 219 yards rushing per game that's where their strength is so if they can limit that only 85 yards versus Oregon and they ended up losing that one they could Utah State could force a similar circumstance in this game for Oregon State it's bend but don't break Utah State is really bad in the red zone between the 20s they're great but they are not good at converting it in the red zone. 101st in the nation in red zone conversion have only completed uh, or only finished 26 out of 50 drives with touchdowns. So they're only completing something like 72% of their drives with touchdowns. Really low numbers, like I said, good for or bad enough for 101st in the nation. Boise State saw this against Utah State, held them to three points. They had a lot of drives in between the 20s, a lot of yardage given up but ended up short because they couldn't punch, punch it in the end. Logan Bonner, he's big into the passing game. I mean, that's the, the deep passing game. When he has field to work with, that's where he shines. But in the short passing game, he's not quite as good, and Utah State doesn't really have that dominant back, that red zone kind of power back who's able to push it in when you get into the, inside the short yardage on a regular basis. Um, so predictions in this one. While my heart wants to say a Utah State win, and I really, really do as a Mountain West fan, as a Boise State fan who beat, we beat Utah State, it'd be great to see uh, Utah State go out and win this game against Oregon State. But the issue here is that I'm not sure that Utah State can stop Oregon State's running game consistently. Uh, Utah State gives up, on average, 162.6 yards per game on the ground now they have at times shown the ability to limit the damage in the running game uh, but the fact that they're not really a consistent run stopping team and they are they don't have a consistent running game on their end I mean they're really one-dimensional they average 148.3 yards per rush but I mean against San Diego State they had under 100 yards rushing and and they didn't do that great against Boise State either and then 305 yards passing that's where their strength is they average 305 yards per game through the air but Oregon State this is a Pac-12 defense who's already been been able to limit passing teams or be able to complete sorry my, <laughs> my phone's dying been able to compete against those passing teams and when one you have a loss a recent loss against Wyoming also overshadowing this it's great that Utah State went out and got the upset but that's what it was it was an upset it I wasn't supposed to happen but anybody can beat anybody on any given Saturday and Utah State was able to get that upset against San Diego State but usually what you end up seeing in these Mountain West versus Pac-12 matchups in the Mountain West champ in the uh, the winner of the Mountain West game versus the mid-level Pac-12 team. If the Mountain West team representing is the dominant team that people expected that should that should be representing, uh, you know, the ranked team with one or two losses, you know, the the good team, if they're the one that represents in the Pac-12 champ in the sorry, in the uh, in the bowl game, they usually end up getting that win against the Pac-12. However, when it's the team that gets the upset, the comeback team, and we think about Fresno State from a few years back, when it's the comeback team that comes in and gets it, they might get that comeback and that big win, uh, that upset win in the Mountain West Championship game, but they don't usually end up replicating that upset win in the, in the bowl game as well. So... I'm looking at what Utah State brings to the table and the, their lack of a consistent running game and the fact that Oregon State is so dangerous through the ground. And I just don't see them being able to fully stop that running attack. I think Oregon State is going to get out to a little bit of an early lead in this one and then hold on. I think Utah State is going to have a valiant comeback attempt, almost get that win, but fall just short. So I'm going to call a U Oregon State win. And then I'm going to call just over on the over-under. I think it'll probably be the, uh, you know 10-point victory, something like that. So... Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you like and subscribe. Again, I'm rooting for Utah State, but I got it from an unbiased perspective. I, I think analyst-wise, Oregon State's probably got the got the game in this one. But I think it should be a close and a fun matchup. Always exciting to see the winner of the Mountain West competing in their in their bowl games, for, as well as it is all the Mountain West teams. And talking about those, I'll be previewing every single bowl game, including every Mountain West, every Pac-12 game. So make sure you like, subscribe, and don't miss out on any of that uh, great bowl game preview action. Thank you for watching this video. As always, go Big Blue!